What's going on, Rovers? It's Mr. Shalott back with another video. We're continuing on with our automobile blocks project today, and today's lesson is going to be on the windshield. All right, so let me load up on shape and we will continue talking about the automobile blocks. All right, let's do this. So we're going to take a look over here at our origins, and we can turn them all off except the front view like we normally do. All right, we're going to start a sketch on our front view. So I'll choose my sketch tool, select that front view, rotate the cube around, and we're ready to roll. Okay, I'm going to start off with a long rectangle. Okay, as I do this, I am then going to select the rectangle that I just drew. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to turn it to a construction line. Okay, this is not a box we actually need. All right, however, um, it's going to help us create our final shape. We're also going to put in a couple lines, right? Um, and I'll explain what these lines are in just a second. So I'll have a line here and I'm going to put a line over here. And we'll make both of those, highlight them both, right click, turn on construction. All right, so let's modify our box. We got to get some dimensions on. Let's look at the actual drawing. Okay, so here we are in our packet. We're going to scroll down to the windshield. All right, we can blow this up so you guys can see a little better. Okay, great. So the windshield does look like a difficult piece, okay? Of all the pieces you're modeling, it, it, it looks like it would give you the most headache. But when you break this down systematically into, into different sketches, it's really not that bad, okay? So let's take a look at it. Um, the process we're going to use is we're, we're kind of going to ignore these bottom two drawings for now. We're only going to look up at the top because what we're going to try and do right now is draw this arc. That's the piece that we want, okay? And there's a whole lot of numbers here. Um, you don't necessarily need them all, okay? It's kind of over-dimensioned. You wouldn't really need all these numbers. So the way that we break this down, all right, is I like to draw a construction box because we're used to drawing those. So from the start of this, I'm going to draw a construction box up. I'm going to come over the length of it, come down. That's the construction box we just drew, okay? And then also on it, I have these two lines. Okay, what we're going to do, this thing is made up of three arcs. So there's an arc that goes to here, and then there's one that comes over to here, and then there's one that comes down to the bottom. So three total arcs create um, this long arc that we're going to have. Okay, that's what we're trying to create. So the overall width from one side to the other. Okay, the whole length of this thing, you would think it's 301, but if you look at the bottom of the windshield, it's actually, if we follow that down, it's actually 304. 304 is the length of the box, and then the height of the box, so from here up to where that arc stops, they're telling us that's one inch. So we're going to get those two numbers in there, all right, and I'll come over and throw some dimensions on it. So from side to side, that's going to be one inch, all right. And then the overall is that 3.04. Okay, looking good. And now we need to know the distance. How far over does this first arc stop? And how far high is this third arc that's going to be over here? Okay, so we'll look back at our drawings. All right, and this arc comes all the way over to this point. And this point, they're telling us that's 2.55, 2.55. Right? And then over here, from the base up to where this arc stops, it's 0.64. So we need those two numbers. Okay, We'll go ahead and uh, throw some dimensions on here. Okay, So we'll dimension from here to here, 0.64. Right? And then from here to here is going to be that 2.55. Right. So 
there we go. We're now ready to draw our arcs, okay? So when we go to draw our arcs, I'm going to come over and select the arc tool, right? And I'll start from here over to here, and the radius on this particular arc is going to be a radius of 6, okay? And then from here to here, that radius is going to be 0.4. And I'll show you on the drawings where we get this. And then this last one is also going to be a radius of 6. So 6, 6, and 0.4 in between. All right, let's look at the drawing where we got those numbers. Okay, so here is the 0.4 that they're telling us. This one over here has a radius of 6. Okay, and then they never actually put the fillet on it over here. Okay, what that radius is, but it's a 6. Okay, so that's the number we're going to use, 0.6. I'm sorry, not 0 0.6, 6. Uh, this is 0.4 up here. All right, so at this point, we'll take a look at our part. All right, we have to draw and finish our shape. So across the bottom, I have to draw one straight line. So I'm going to go from corner to corner. And now the shape is finished. I can hit the green check mark. Okay, once the green check mark is hit, we can now go ahead and extrude our shape. Okay, the default extrude is one inch. That's not necessarily what we need. We need to know from side to side how far is this extrude. Well, when we're looking, they're saying it's 2.55, 2.55. So when we go to do the extrude, we're going to type that number in, 2.55, but we're not going to go in one direction. We're actually going to change this to symmetric. So it goes equal distance. It's going 2.55 on the width, but it's going equal distance in each direction. Okay, so we'll hit the green check mark. Now, at this point, Okay, we can turn off our front plane there. We don't need it anymore. We need to have a really nice fillet that runs around the side of this. Okay, so all of this here needs to have a fillet. And then on this side, that has a fillet as well. When we look at our drawing, they're telling us that the fillet there is 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Now, this is where you'll run into issues. Okay, and I want to show you what would happen. So if I choose the fillet tool like we've used previously, and I select, each one of these, you can see it's starting to bend, all right? And I go to, the default is 0.2, but if I type in 0.5, all right, and I hit enter, it doesn't do the fillet, okay? It won't allow you to do the fillet. This is an issue with Onshape where our arcs are coming together, right? But they are not tangent. So basically this arc and this arc aren't at the same point Therefore, it won't let you put the fillet on it, okay? So we can't do the fillet how we normally would. We actually have to go back in and modify our sketch. So if we come back over to our build, our original sketch, which is over here, sketch one, I'm gonna double click on that, okay? We're back into our sketch. We have to make some modifications now, all right? The modifications that you're going to do is you need to delete this 2.55 dimension at the top we're going to delete that. And you're also going to delete the 0.64. Okay, 0.64, those go away. Now, what we need to do is we need to make this arc and this arc tangent. See how this one's coming down? It's like pointing down right now. It won't allow you to do the fillet because as this comes around, it's like pointing downward and this is coming up. So they need to be like even. Okay, and then same thing's happening over here, although you can't see it. Um, that, that radius of six there is difficult to see with the construction line on. So what we have to do, we actually have to make these tangent, okay? So basically one smooth curve. So to get that, we're gonna follow our tools all the way across, all right? And you're probably seeing this tool, the coincident tool right now. We're actually gonna come down and we're going to select the tangent tool. So it's all the way to the right of your tools, okay? I'm gonna select tangent. And then all I do is I select this first arc and I select the second arc and you'll see it move just ever so slightly, okay? But now it's one smooth arc. And then the same thing's gonna happen here. I'm gonna make this tangent and then zoom in there, make sure you're actually clicking on the arc and not the construction line, okay? And now we're good to go, okay? But in order to do that, you have to turn off the um, those two dimensions. So the 2.55 across the top and the 0.64 coming up, you have to get rid of those, okay? All right, so we'll hit the green check mark. We go back out. 
Now, when we go to put the fillet on, okay, so as I come in and I, I select that and, and I do it over here. Notice how it did it all at once. I didn't have to select everything individually, all right? And instead of 0.2, it's actually going to be that 0.5. Okay, so I'll type 0.5, nice and nice round edges now, okay? And we're good to go. We take a look at this thing and now it is done, okay? The top half is done. Now we just have to work on the bottom half. So this is finished, okay? Now, this thing does have a shell, so underneath, this part is all hollowed out, okay? So we have to shell it first, but we'll come up to the top and it looks like um, when you come up to the top and we go to choose shell, okay? Here it is, it's like a box, not box, it's hollowed out. I'll select shell and I'll select the inside and it starts making it shelled out. We have to make sure we choose the right shell thickness, okay? How thick is our shell? The default is 0.1. That is not going to be the right number. So you have to make sure you change that. We'll come over here. We have to determine how thick is this thing. Well, when we look at it, they're telling, this, telling us in two separate places. We look up top here and they're telling us that this is 0.07 thick, all right? And then also when you're looking at it from underneath, they tell you this dimension right here, that 0.07. So they actually tell you on the drawing two times what the number is, all right? Uh, they didn't have to do that, but they did. So we're going to change that 0.1 to 0.07. Hit enter. That'll make it a little thinner, and we're good to go. All right. Now, when we're looking at this shape, all right, we now have to start working on the bottom. All right. The problem is we need a flat surface to work off of. Okay. We can't work on curved surfaces. So. To get a flat surface, we have to pull it off of something. And the only flat surface we have underneath is the bottom of our windshield that runs all the way around the outside, okay? That is going to be the surface that we're going to use. So we're gonna choose work plane, okay? I'm gonna choose work plane, and I'm gonna select that surface underneath, okay? You can see that it, it's starting to put that plane, it's pulling it down, okay? It says it wants to come down one inch. Let's look at this thing from the side, okay? There's my work plane, okay? Well, how far is the drop? How far does this thing come down? Let's look at our dimensions, okay? We need to determine, okay, from where that windshield ends, how far does this come down here, okay? What is that distance? Let's give you a second to look at it, see if you can figure it out. And hopefully you're seeing it's 0.67, okay? So as we come across this distance, Okay, they're telling us that's a distance of 0.67. So we'll come back over to our document, okay? And we're going to change the offset instead of one to 0.67, okay? Hit enter, drops the work plane. We're now ready to start working on it, okay? So I'm gonna start a sketch and I'm gonna select that plane. And now I'm actually drawing down here on the bottom, okay? So we're looking at our sketch right now and. And we want to make sure our sketch is facing the same way, okay? So we want to make sure we're looking from right to left. We wouldn't want to be working on our document, like, turned. You know what I mean? So we want to make sure it's straight across because that's how our dimensions are. So don't make it hard on yourself, all right? Now, before we start drawing, remember, when we're, at, when we're drawing out on our plane, we're out in 3D, we got to know where to be able to dimension to things, okay? So we have to take the information that we already have, and bring that out to our plane. That's a projection, okay? So if we come up to the top, we have to project what we already have out to our sketch. So we'll come up to the top here and right here. Uh, it's right next to the letter A. Um, it says use project slash convert. So we're going to project. We're going to select the bottom of this thing. Okay. And if I look at this from the edge, see it brought that outside edge down. Okay. And we'll look at the bottom again. And I want to get all these lines that go around as well. So I'm going to click on each one of those uh, individually there. Bring all that information out. All right, so what did we do? Let's, let's look at this thing. 
Oh, looks like I got to get two more curves. But as you can see, I'm bringing this edge, it runs all the way around, I'm bringing that down to the sketch just so I have that information. Why? Well, when we look at the drawing, it's on here, okay? So a lot of these dimensions that they pull off down here are going to be based off of those lines. So we got to make sure we have all of those lines with us, okay? So we'll look at the bottom again, and we'll just get these last two curves there and there. I think we got it all now. All right, you can double check your work. Just give it a rotate. See, I have the whole ring now. That's important, okay? If you, if you don't have that information, you're not going to be able to dimension correctly, all right? Looking good, all right? So again, we're breaking this thing down, all right? We're going uh, super slow. There's a whole lot of dimensions on here. So when we look at this, whole lot of stuff going on. You have basically a larger rectangle, and then there's some tabs that are going to hold that into the wooden block of our passenger base. All right, so let's start off. We look at this shape here. It's basically a rectangle. So we might as well go ahead and start with a rectangle. All right, I'll come in and I'm just going to draw a box. Don't worry about the size of the box. We're going to get some dimensions on that now. All right, so basic dimensions. If I'm dimensioning, let's say from the front edge to here, okay, what is that distance? Well, we're going to look at our drawing, see if they give us that information. So from here over to the first line is 0 0.68, 0 0.68. And then all the way over to the other side of it is 2.22, 2.22. So 0.68 and 2.22. Let's get those numbers. Okay, so we got 0.68. All right, and then we're going to go from here over to here. 2.22, all right, height-wise, if we go from this edge to that first edge there, okay, whoops, let's try it again, we dimension here to here, give me a little bit of a hassle here, let's see if we can get a different number, all right, so, from the base all the way up to the other edge, 2.26. Let's put that on there, okay? So from here to here is 2.26, all right? And then we'll go from here to here, okay, to that first edge. Let's switch back over, look at our drawing, okay? And they're telling us that's gonna be 0.29. So the distance from here to there is 0.29. We'll go ahead and get that entered, 0.29. All right, there's our box, all right? Now, our box does have rounded corners, okay? We know that's known as a fillet, so we can go ahead and, and round those over. We go ahead and, and use our, our sketch fillet tool and we can select here and here, and it will put the round radius on, okay? The size of that radius, okay? All four of them are 0.15, so we wanna make sure we have um, 0.15 running around, okay? I think the default is 0.2, so you're gonna have to type that number in, okay? So I have 0.15 there, that's good, okay? And then I can continue, um, and select the other corners, okay? And uh, round all these over, okay? Make sure you get them all, okay? Just select the corners and, and press return and it'll lock it in, okay? So we have 0.15 running around as the radius that runs around the outside of the shape. Looking good. And our and our box, our rectangle is in the right spot because we have dimensioned it to the right spot. Okay. So what's next? Well, all right. So as we take a look at our drawing here, we have already done the outside. I'll zoom in a little bit so we can see a little better. All right. We have already done the outside going around. 
right? But now we have that same shape within, okay? Comes in just a little bit. We need to know how thick that shelf thickness is. They don't have it dimensioned because it's such a small number. So what they did was, you'll see here, they circled this with B and they did a detailed view where it's four to one. So now in this four to one area over here, okay, we could tell that that thickness is going to be 0.05, okay, 0.05. Well, when we're doing our drawing, we already have done it once. What we need to do is offset this 0.05 all the way around, all right? There's no sense of you drawing four more lines and then having to, you know, put a fillet on there four more times. That's a whole lot of extra work that you don't need to do. We can use the offset command. So as we look up to the top, right next to mirror, okay, is offset. And when I select offset, what I want to do is I want to highlight everything that I want to offset. All right, so before I actually click on it, I'm going to come over to the drawing, all right, and I can do a press and a drag, and that will highlight all my parts in yellow, okay? Once I have those highlighted in yellow, I'll come up and click on the offset tool, all right? And as you'll notice here, it's putting, it's going around the outside this shape, but it's going in the wrong direction, okay? So it's going outward. All right, and they're telling us it's going outward a total of 0.25. Well, if I grab that arrow and I drag it, okay, now I can bring that within, okay? And the number that I need is 0.05. So I'll drag that until I get to 0.05. And then you just press return or enter on your keyboard, okay? And that'll lock it in. Take a look at what we have now, all right? That thing runs all the way around, okay? Looks like train tracks, all right? Looks re real nice and even all the way around. All the fillets are correct, all right? And that was all using the offset command, all right? All using the offset command. So, continuing to look at this, all right? Um, at this point, I would, I would get your line tool, find the midpoint, okay? So as I come across here, I'm gonna get that dot and I'm gonna draw this line coming down to here and uh, we'll do the same, okay? I'll draw another line from, uh, get my line tool, okay? Come over, snap it, bring it over here, snap it, okay? And then with those two lines, highlight them both and you can, uh, let's turn those to construction, okay? Because we're gonna need to know where the midpoint is Okay, so now we know halfway in between here, halfway in between here, we have those lines on our page that we can use at a later time. All right, continuing to look at, continuing to look here, all right, um, we now have to get these little nubs. So going around the outside of this, there's six nubs. We've got one here and one here. And then we got two over here and in the middle as well. Okay, so there's a total of six of them, all right? What is the process? What are we gonna do in order to get those on? Well, let's do this one here where they're blowing it up first. All right, we'll start with that one, all right? And we're gonna draw a box. And when we go to draw the box, it's 0.05 wide and it's, Height-wise, they don't tell us, but we can subtract those two numbers. It's 0.04 tall, all right? So let's go ahead and draw a little, little box. We'll, we'll zoom in here, okay? And I'll start over here and press and drag the box, all right? Now we need to dimension it, okay? As, uh, as we said, let me go back, look at our dimensions here. Okay, so this here being the center point, it goes 0.025 in each direction. Let's go with that number, okay? So here on our sketch, we're gonna go ahead and dimension. So from here to the midpoint, it should be 0.025, okay? And then from the midpoint over to here, 
that should be 0 0.025, right? And then the height, 0 0.04, right? And now that thing is in the right spot, okay? This thing is in the right spot. Now, we need one on the other side. We need one over here, okay? So we could just do exactly what we just did, okay? And uh, we could draw a box and dimension it, do all that. Or we could use the mirror command. Since we have the midway point, let's just use the mirror command. So we'll come in, okay? Press escape so you don't have a tool active. You're gonna press and drag, okay? And when you go to highlight, uh, I'm just too far zoomed in here to get the stuff to be selected. Okay. I'm going to select the lines here. Okay. Make sure I have those highlighted. You don't necessarily need this one, but you can select it if you want it. Okay. So that's what we want. And we want to mirror it. So I'm going to choose mirror. And then I'm going to select the mirror line. All right. And look what it did. It put the box over here. It's already dimensioned. Everything's good to go. And with two clicks of the mouse, it's finished. Okay. Now come in with your scissors. Okay. And we're going to get rid of these lines in here. We don't need them. Okay. So we can get rid of those lines. Okay. They're gone. Same thing on the other side. Okay. Zoom in here, okay. You got your scissor tool. Just click on the lines, make sure you have the scissors selected up here. All right, I'm just gonna make those disappear. Okay, so they're gone. Make sure I got the ones on the other side. I'm not exactly sure if I did. Oh, now I'm getting all messed up because I'm zoomed in. Oh, let's rotate the cube. Is all jumping around. Got too much stuff running. Okay. Yep, there's no line there. We're good. I can double check, but yeah, there's no line. Okay. So those are good. We got those two nubs. Now we got to get the nubs down here at the bottom. All right, so let's start drawing those. So to draw those, I use the same process, okay? I'm going to come in, draw myself a box. That box is not in the right spot right now where you have to dimension to it, okay? We'll go ahead and look at our drawings here. They're saying from the front edge here over to the midpoint, is 0 0.095, all right? But we don't want the midpoint. We got to go a little bit more, so it's 0.95 plus 0 0.025. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and dimension. We start from here to the back edge of this, okay? And it should be 0 0.95 plus 0 0.025. Because remember, 0.95 got us to the midpoint. We don't want the midpoint, we want the edge. So we gotta add that little bit of extra on there. So I'll go ahead and hit enter, okay? Now we know that's in the right spot. We can zoom in here, okay? Overall, okay, it's still the same sizes, but we'll look, okay? 0.05 is the width, 0.04 is the height, okay? So. We'll go ahead and throw some more dimensions on there. 0 0.04, 0 0.05, loving it, looks good. Okay, now let's start duplicating it. Okay, this is why we had those mid, mid uh, lines in there. Okay, the midpoint, so we can use the beer. All right, so if I go ahead and 
deselect everything. Now I got to select those three lines. Okay. So I can just come in and I can press and drag over them. All right. Those are the three lines that I need. I want to use the mirror tool. I want to mirror off of this line. Okay. Try it again because I was zoomed in, getting all screwed up. All right. So we'll use the mirror tool. Each of those lines, notice they went over there. We're good to go. All right. Hit the check mark, go back into the sketch. Now we have both of these down here. They need to go up top. So again, we can choose mirror. All right. It's asking to select the mirror line. I'm going to select that line there in the middle. And now it wants me to select each of these lines. We'll select each one. Okay. Did they go up? Those three went up. Okay, and then we could select these as well. Make sure they went up. Okay, we're good to go. We use our trim tool. Okay, get rid of any extra lines that you have. All right. All right, and if it doesn't let you get these lines, like right now, it's not letting me get in there and, and select that line. Oh, because I don't have the, the scissor tool selected, that's why. There we go. Get rid of that one. Zoom in, make sure you have the scissors. That'll go away. Oops, looks like I got rid of a little bit too much. There we go. To the bottom. Okay, again, scissor tool. Get rid of that one little line there. Okay, make sure you have the scissor tool selected. Scissors. Sometimes you got to click on it a few times. I'm not quite sure why that is. That's weird. All right. Let's check out the bottom. Okay. Make sure you have that scissor tool selected. Get rid of those lines. Honestly, if you don't get rid of these lines, it's not a big deal. I just like to do it. You'll see why on the next step. If you're having problems and can't get rid of those lines, it's not the big deal. But what's going to happen is at this point, we're ready to extrude. And if you have gotten rid of those lines, it will extrude this whole thing all as one big group. If you choose extrude and you still have those lines, you literally have to come in and click on all those small little boxes. Either way is fine. Okay, There's, there's nothing wrong with either way. All right. So we're at the point now where I can finish the sketch. We'll look underneath here. Okay, we're going to go ahead and choose extrude. I'm going to go ahead and select that surface. Notice it's going down. We don't want it to go down. We want it to go up. So I'm going to change my direction. All right, now it's going up. How far do I want it to go up? I want it to go up until it hits the inside surface there. So I'm going to change blind to up to next. All right, and when it hits the inside of there, it's going to stop. So I'll hit the green check mark. And now when we go ahead and rotate this around, I can turn off this plane. So on plane, I'll turn the eyeball off just so we can see a little better. All right. And we'll rotate this around. And you can see it extruded all of those all together all at once. Now, if you did not get rid of those little lines that I was having a little difficulty there at the end, okay, if you didn't do that, you would have to choose extrude and then you'd have to click on each one of these if you didn't get rid of the lines, if you left them. But if you got rid of them, it does it all as one group. That's why it's kind of worth the hassle um, to try and get rid of those lines with the scissor tool, okay? Trim them off and, and you'll be good to go, all 
All right, so we're at the point now where we can uh, go ahead and, and, and change the color of this. All right, so remember you come over to parts, you right click on parts, you choose um, edit appearance, and then you can go ahead and select a color, okay? Some kind of green for the windshield is going to look good, all right? Whichever one you think looks right, and we're good to go, okay? And that's the windshield, all right? It's not as difficult as it looks, all right? You got to make sure you get all those little nubs on there, all right? A lot of dimensions, some of which you didn't necessarily need in order to accomplish this shape, all right? Remember, if you have difficulty with this one, play, pause, and rewind. You can go back, um, rewatch the video if, if, if you, you get lost or struggle on any of it, all right? And I am here to help, so if you get stuck, you reach out to me, all right? That's going to do it for today. Take care. Do not pause and draw lines as I did, all right? I want you to watch the video and then attempt it on your own. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon.